Welcome ladies and gentlemen, my name's Epoxy, and here in this video I will be showing you how to permanently fix Fallout 3 for PC. This includes fixing crashing, CTDs, freezing, errors, visual stuttering, and even the radio stutters. Along with a ton of other game bugs and glitches and errors that will cause your game to either not look normal, act unnormal, or just simply just be kind of a little bit broken. So we're going to be showing you how to fix that here in this video. Whether you have a CD version of the game or a Steam version of the game, this tutorial should work perfectly. However, I will be referring to the Steam version mostly throughout this video as that is the version I personally own. So let's go ahead and just get right into it on how to get you up and playing Fallout 3 on the PC without any problems. Now, in rare cases, you may have gotten a bad install or followed a bad guide on YouTube that has ruined your game. So sadly, the first step of this process is to do a full fresh install for your game to ensure that you don't have that problem after going through all the work that's going to be in this tutorial because it's quite a bit. And I'd personally say you don't want to be doing it multiple times in a row to get your game working. So to uninstall your Fallout 3, it's actually pretty simple. If you do have any mods installed, you'll actually want to go ahead and uninstall all of those first. But with that out of the way, all you have to do is launch up Steam and right click on Fallout 3 and choose delete local content in the drop down menu. Once that is done, head over to your my documents directory, go into my games, go into your Fallout 3 and back up your saves if you truly want to and then delete the entire Fallout 3 folder. Now keep in mind that your saves may be corrupted and may have problems within them and may be causing the crashing. So if you wanna make sure that you no longer crash in the future, make sure to delete your saves. But if you really wanna save your saves, then you're gonna to have to back them up and hope that they aren't corrupt. And then after you back up your saves, you're going to want to go ahead and delete the entire Fallout 3 folder. Now what you want to do is go to your Steam directory. This should be located in Computer, Local Disk, Program Files 86, Steam, Steam Apps, and Common. When in this directory, delete the entire Fallout 3 folder if it still remains. Now you have successfully done a full, fresh uninstall of the game, and now you can go ahead and reinstall it. Once your game is reinstalled, we're ready to continue with the actual fixing section of this tutorial. So now what you need to do is start up Fallout 3, click play, and then close your game. This will do two things. Ensure you don't have the crash on play issue, which if you do, it will be fixed in the next step of this video. Whether or not you have the issue, please follow the next step anyway. And it will also validate your game and generate some files such as .ini files that Fallout 3 requires to run. This step must be done before continuing or it will cause crash on start. Alright, so next up is to update games for Windows Live. This usually fixes the crashes that happen as soon as clicking play on the launcher. One of the actual most common problems people seem to have. So to update games for Windows Live, click the link for it in the description below. This will be a direct download link, so it will ask you where to save. As soon as you click the link, feel free to save it where you want, but I'm going to save it to my downloads. Open up the file directory that you downloaded it to and double click and run through the installation process. If the following screen is displayed, then you already have the latest version of Games for Windows Live installed. Once you're done with installing Games for Windows Live, we can move on to the next step. Alright, so next up we can open back up the Fallout 3 launcher, click options, and set your game resolution to your desktop resolution, and enable windowed mode. Windowed mode on every game makes your game smoother, brings down stuttering, can prevent crashing, and can even increase your frame rate if you're one of the lucky few. I'll be showing you how to get a borderless windowed mode on Fallout 3 working later in this video, but for now let's just go ahead and get the game more stable and able to run. Something we can do to rule it out as being a cause is disabling the Steam overlay by right clicking Fallout 3 in Steam, going to properties, and unchecking enable Steam overlay while in this game. It simply disables the Steam overlay which is known to cause crashes in a few select games. So before continuing on with this tutorial, I need you to ensure that you can now at least open up the game launcher, click play, and get to the game's main menu. If you can't by this point in the video, please let me know down in the comment section below. Now that you can get to your game's main menu, let's now do something that will remove additional crashes and may improve performance. We need to disable games for Windows Live, 
Yes, I know we just updated it or installed it, and that was to fix crashes from it not existing. Now we need to disable it from Fallout 3, as it's known for causing tons of problems, including chronically crashing the game. So how we're actually going to disable this is by installing FOSE, which is actually required for most mods on PC, so it's giving you a win-win for your game. You'll be able to mod your game and fix the crashing in the game at the same time. It's also required for borderless window mode and the optional D3D9.dll file that I'll be showing you later in this video. So yes, this is a required step. To install FOSE, just click the link for it down in the description below, and you'll now be on FOSE.Silverlock.org. Once here, you can click the download link for the current beta version, version 1.3b2 for FOSE, which is a requirement. Once the 7-zip file is downloaded to your computer, go to where you downloaded it and right-click it and extract it with 7-zip. You may need to install 7-zip if you don't already have it on your computer to extract files such as the .7-zip, .rar, and .zip. When extracted, you can now copy all of the extracted files and drop them into your Fallout directory where your Fallout 3 executable files are. Now go ahead and run the FOSE loader executable and once the game is at the main menu, open up your console by pressing the tilde key below the escape key and enter in get FOSE version, no spaces, and make sure that the capitalization is correct as shown on screen now and also shown in the description. Once you've entered that, go ahead and hit enter and it should display the version of FOSE. If not and it gives you an error, please let me know down in the comment section below. Alright, so skip this step if you're using the Steam version of this game, but if you're running the old CD version of this game, update to version 1.7 with the official patch link down in the description below. I'm unable to assist you with this installation due to me only owning the Steam version, so I suggest googling on how to update your CD version with this patch. You should also update your Microsoft.NET framework to 3.5 as the older versions of the game included a bad version of .NET that could actually cause game conflicts. The link for this will be down in the description as well, and the page even includes install instructions and other important information. Now let's go ahead and get back to fixing all versions of the game. What we need to do now is install either Nexus Mod Manager or Mod Organizer. I suggest Mod Organizer and that's also what I'll be using in this video. Now to install Mod Organizer, click the link in the description below and just ignore the fact that it brings you to the Skyrim Nexus. It's just used as a page for the Mod Manager and is where you can find the most frequent updates. Go to the Files tab on the Nexus page, find the most recent version which should be at the top and download the installer version. Once it's being downloaded, double click to launch, hit next, I agree, and on this page you'll want to scroll down and check off handle nexus links, now hit next, now browse and find your follow 3 folder that has the executables in it, select it and mod organizer will now know that you're installing mod organizer for follow 3 and create its folder within the directory. Now you can go ahead and hit ok, Click install and wait for it to finish installing. Once it's done, click finish and launch up Mod Organizer. It will then ask you what version of Fallout 3 you have, the standard or the game of the year edition. It will also ask you if you want to go through a tutorial, which is 100% up to you. However, once you've gotten past all of that, you'll now be set to use Mod Organizer for Fallout 3, but you do need to ensure from here on out, you only launch your Fallout 3 through Mod Organizer or else everything through Mod Organizer won't work in game and also FOSE won't work. So how you're actually gonna have to launch your game from now on is go into Mod Organizer, go to the drop down box, and select the FOSE Launcher. And now we can move on to our next step. The next thing we wanna do is install the updated unofficial Fallout 3 patch, which includes fixes for errors and bugs in Fallout 3 and DLC master files. It's as simple as that. If you want to check out the mod and what it includes, just read the description of the mod page. This mod also includes all of the required .ini file changes that need to be made to Fallout 3 to get it working with Windows 7, 8, and 10, all without needing to do manual editing. To install this, just click the link for the patch in the description below and it will bring you to the Fallout 3 Nexus page for the mod. Click the Files tab and download the manual version and do not download the manager version, as it is indeed missing some files and it will not make the changes to your .ini settings, which are vital to get the game working. So make sure you install the noob friendly version, even if you're put off by the name as it includes extra and even vital .ini fixes. Once it's downloaded to the place of your choice, launch it, 
hit next, select I accept agreement and hit next. I suggest skimming over this page's information, but other than that, just go ahead and hit next. It should then auto detect where your follow three is located, but if not, manually browse and select your follow three directory. You can then hit next and a notification saying the folder exists should pop up. Just go ahead and hit yes. Once on this screen, you can go ahead and choose the version of Fallout 3 that you have. However, it is recommended to have all of the DLC and to choose the full all DLC installation option as this will include all of the fixes and the newest version of the mod. But if not, just choose what version you have and hit next. You can then hit next again and then hit install. It will then tell you good news that it found the updated version of the game and the DLC it found and you can then hit OK. After hitting OK, just wait for the mod to install. This should take about a minute or so due to the amount of fixes this mod actually includes. At the end of the installation, it will ask you if you want the .any settings to be fixed. Make sure that you do indeed click yes. You can then click finish and the mod along with all the fixes will be installed and now all you have to do is check it off in your mod manager's plugins. Within your mod manager, it should be named unofficial follow three patch. .esm. Now for something very important, autosaves and save overwrites often eventually ruin the game with crashes and corruption, meaning that the game will get messed up and start crashing and will also mean that you can no longer use your save. So to fix this, launch up your game, like how I told you earlier, and while in game go to settings, gameplay, disable all three autosave options, and exit the game. This may seem like a pain right now, but we will be installing an all new alternative autosaving mod called Chasm. To install Chasm, just click the link for it down in the description below and go to the files tab. Download the latest main file by clicking download with manager. You may need to select the launch application if you get a pop-up on your browser. You'll then need to log into your Nexus Mods account if you haven't already within Mod Organizer, and then the mod will start downloading in the downloads tab on Mod Organizer. Once finished, double click to install and then check off Chasm in the Mod Organizer. You can now launch your game through Mod Organizer again to see if Chasm is working and so that we can set it up in your game. You can manually save with Chasm by pressing F4 on the keyboard. However, now let's actually go into the juicy options for Chasm that you can actually get to by opening your Pip-Boy, going to Aid, selecting Chasm Options menu, and closing your pit boy You'll then get an easy to navigate menu allowing you to change a series of self-explanatory settings, such as how many saves you want it to cycle between before it starts removing and replacing the old ones within the cycle, or changing your save profile as one, two, or three, depending on the character you're playing as so you don't overwrite saves of your other characters, if any. There are also quite a few other settings that are really cool, such as when you want it to save and when you don't want it to save depending on multiple factors. It's all very easy to use and to understand, and that's why I love this mod so much. It's a one-of-a-kind mod, so just be happy that it was done perfectly right. Now, if you want to remove the visual stutter, we need to install Fallout Stutter Remover. To install Fallout Stutter Remover, just click the link for it down in the description below and go to the Files tab. Download the latest main file, which should be version 4.1.36, by clicking Download with Manager. You may need to select Launch Application once again if you get the pop-up. Now Mod Organizer will start downloading in the Downloads tab. Once finished, double click to install and then check off Fallout Stutter Remover in Mod Organizer. You can now launch your game through Mod Organizer again to see if Fallout Stutter Remover helped at all. I suggest keeping it installed even if you don't see much difference as it will help with the worsening stutter you may see when modding your game heavily. Alright, so now it's time for installing the Borderless Windowed Mode plugin for FOSC. Just go to the Borderless Windowed Mode link in the description and it will bring you to the Fallout 3 Nexus. Go to the Files tab and click Download with Manager. Go to the Downloads in Mod Organizer, double click to install, and check it off. Now go ahead and launch the game and see if Borderless Windowed Mode is indeed working. It should work perfectly fine and you get to see Borderless Windowed Mode in action. Also, if you still have the radio stutter issue, check out the link down in the description below for the radio stutter issue. Now that you've made it to this point in the video, this is actually where most people should be good to go and ready to play the game. I suggest playing the game for about an hour or two and see if your game crashing is resolved. If not, then I actually do have a few more steps in resolving your problems depending on your setup. Now, the following step is going to be for those using Intel CPU integrated graphics to try and run the game. Go to the Intel HD graphics bypass link in the description. It will bring you to a Fallout 3 Nexus and download the file. Once the file is downloaded, extract the file and you'll be left with a D3D9.dll file. 
Place it in the Fallout 3 directory where the executables are located, reset your resolution in the launcher, and uncheck Water Reflection slash Refractions for performance issues with integrated graphics processing. Exit the launcher and launch your game with Mod Organizer. Now this following step is only for older operating systems, so do not try this on Windows 8 or Windows 10. Go to your Fallout3.exe, right click and select properties, click the compatibility tab up top, now disable desktop composition, and also set your theme to Windows Basic. Now try launching the game again through Mod Organizer and see if that fixed your problem. If none of the tips in this video so far have helped you, try installing the K-Lite Codec Pack, which will be linked in the description below, and also click the Disabling Evil Codex link and see if that tutorial can help you out with your situation at all. Our final step is to ensure we aren't doing anything that Fallout 3 dislikes while the game is opened. What I mean by this is ensuring that programs or overlay applications are disabled when running the game. This includes things such as Overwolf, Asus Exonar, and Gamer OSD. If you don't have any of these installed or at least aren't running them while playing Fallout 3, then you're clear for that. We also need to ensure that dual or more monitors isn't causing the conflict. We can test this by first setting them all to the same resolution, and if that doesn't fix anything then we can try turning them all off except for our main monitor that we play Fallout 3 on and see if that solves the problem. However, that's actually all I have for you in this video and there isn't much else I can do to help. If you are still having issues after doing everything properly in this video, please feel free to ask for help in the comments and I can try to help you out but I can't guarantee anything because well, computers can be quite confusing, especially when you're trying to fix things. So, Fallout 3, it can have a lot of issues, and I may not be able to truly figure out what the problem is that you're having. But feel free and leave it down in the comment section below, and I'll try to help you out. However, I do hope that all of you did get your game working from this tutorial, as it should help everyone with whatever problem is causing the issue, or even multiple problems at the same time. But that's actually it for this video. Hopefully you all enjoyed and got something out of it. If you did, please smack that like button down below and subscribe to join the good fight. It'd be super greatly appreciated. But until next time, this is Epoxy, signing off. Screaming, oh, 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 oh